Okay, let's get started. Welcome to the Canadian Immigrant Web Conference Series in partnership with Access Employment and sponsored by Care Center for Internationally Educated Nursing Professionals and Public Mobile. We're thrilled to have you all joining us uh, for this industry specific web conference for internationally educated nursing and medical professionals. So this is being recorded and uh, will be posted on our website uh, to watch for those who cannot attend in person. So I'm Ramya Ramnathan, I'm the editor of Canadian Immigrant and I'm joined by my colleagues, Laura Jackman and Ricky Bajaj. Um, so this three part web conference series today will feature speakers from CARE, the Center for Internationally Educated Nurses, Access Employment and Windmill Microlending. And thank you to our sponsors who support Canadian Immigrant and allow us to run these free events and webinars for newcomers across the country. So to get started, we would like to show a short video from one of our sponsors, Public Mobile. So here it goes. Matt and Megan felt stuck with their phone company. But since switching to public mobile, where there's no commitments, no contracts, and no hidden fees, they're free to feel the love again. Great. So thank you to public mobile. So let's get started with the program. Um, our first speakers are from CARE, the Center for Internationally Educated Nurses. And we have Ruth Lee and Megan Wankel. So Ruth is the executive director of CARE and uh, the associate clinical professor, professor at the School of Nursing at McMaster University. Megan is a program coordinator, CARE's pre-arrival support and services program. It's called the PASS program. Ruth and Megan are here to talk to you today about career pathways for internationally trained nurses in Canada, accreditations that CARE can provide, and licensing processes uh, needed to become an internationally educated nurse. Um, and if you have any questions for Ruth or Megan, please feel free to type them in the chat or in the Q&A box. So you can email us or you can email us at info at canadianimmigrant.ca. Thank you, Ruth and Megan for joining us today. Um, the floor is yours. I believe you have a presentation. Yes. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ruth Lee, and uh, I'm uh, very privileged to uh, be here today with you, uh, together with my colleague, uh, Megan Wonko. Uh, she is the person that in charge of our pre-arrival program. What that means is that she can actually prepare you before you even set foot uh, in, in Canada. So. Um, Based on the intro, uh, probably uh, looking at my bio, you know that I am a seasoned nurse. I wouldn't call myself an old nurse uh, because I'm pretty young at heart. Uh, I've been a nurse uh, in Canada for over 30 years, uh, uh, basically uh, almost in all the roles that uh, along the journey of nursing. So I hope that uh, I can share some of uh, my experience with you. Uh, and also I'm very passionate at supporting uh, nurses uh, coming from all over the world that uh, we are so privileged to have because they bring all their uh, experience, cultural perspective, uh, and uh, to, to strengthen uh, the nursing performance profession in, in this country. Uh, so um, my colleague Megan will be advancing the uh, PowerPoint for us. So uh, I hope that uh, uh, we are not too fast with you. But as uh, uh, the uh, earlier person mentioned that uh, you can contact us anytime that you think that uh, you have any questions. OK, so today we're going to briefly go over uh, the fact that uh, Canada need nurses, and particularly internationally educated nurses. As I mentioned, they bring different perspective to the care uh, in uh, Canada. So I'm going to provide you with a quick environmental scan to lay the, the land in order to see what's going on here. And also the challenges and opportunities 
of integrating into the Canadian healthcare system, a bit about Care Center for internationally educated nurses, how we can help you uh, through our uh, program in Ontario. Uh, uh, we call it the STARS program, which we elaborate, and also Megan will focus more on the PR Vival, how she uh, and her program can support you. We're going to let you know what the eligibility requirements are so you know if you can join us or not. And again, I, I cannot reinforce the fact that there's no dumb questions in our book. Any question, you know, just send it our way if we're not uh, uh, clear on our uh, brief presentation. And we will end with some strategies to help you launch your career and integrate into the Canadian healthcare system. So Canada need nurses more than ever before. And I think that apply to a lot of the country as well, particularly Western countries. Uh, so when you look at Cana uh, the, the uh, statistics from Statistics Canada, which is the official statistics source, uh, we know that there's all kinds of uh, um, uh, uh, rumors or whatever out there. But if you go to the proper source, you, you will get the correct information. So Statistics Canada, hot off the press, tell us that our population, the Canadian population, are increasingly diverse. And actually, right now, one in five Canadians are foreign born. And by 2031, 28% of Canadians will be foreign born. So you can see that we are a pretty young country with a lot of the talents coming to this country, which we really treasure and appreciate. Uh, when you look at the statistic I provide here, uh, it's from the Canadian Nurses Association. Uh, we predict that we're short 60 to 76,000 nurses over the next decade. And I can tell you this, this has changed because when this is published, it's a few years old. And because of COVID and the fact that we're looking into the need of nursing, particularly in long-term care and home care, this number, I would say at least double or more. So we need nurses including internationally educated nurses. Why? First of all, I mentioned about the nursing shortage, but again, because of the diversity that I talk about, we also need your expertise of the, the different languages that you speak, the cultural uh, uh, knowledge that you bring uh, to the job other than your fabulous skills. I have worked in the nursing system for over three decades, uh, and I know how skilled internationally educated nurses are, how efficient they are. And, and on top of that, they bring all the extras uh, with them, i.e. meeting the needs of a diverse thing, uh, increasingly diverse uh, patient population. And the government actually have supported uh, IEN quite a bit. Uh, the Conference Board of Canada have done a, a study in 2015 and actually look into what care centers doing and other people are doing to support IENs. And they have concluded uh, for each registered nurse that the, uh, the Canadian government have invested in supporting, the return is nine times over a nurse career. So in other words, uh, the government help you, but you also uh, bring it back a lot. So it's uh, really a, a good uh, investment, one for nine and three for nine for registered practical nurses, or for those of you heading to other provinces, is a licensed practical nurse. So, uh, of course, uh, we are not naive to say that everything is smooth sailing, right? There's a lot of challenges, but with the challenge is also come a opportunity. So for those of you who know Chinese culture, I'm a, a native of Hong Kong, you know that with all the crisis that we're facing now, we do have a lot of opportunities. And um, so I just gonna briefly go over uh, those with you. I think the number one challenge is the language and communication barrier. Uh, so most of you will speak English as a second language like me. So uh, I come with an accent, but I can learn to minimize it and speak clearly. So language and communication is, is one way, the language itself and also how, uh, you know, we communicate. And a lot of people tease Canadians that they will talk something else rather than cut to the chase about patient care. Uh, even you go to the, the bank, uh, the bank teller will ask you how, how's the weather, how you get here, rather than just say, okay, how much you want to get out from your account, right? So a lot of those idiosyncrasies, uh, communication things uh, is, is a, a challenge to, for the newcomer to, to learn. Another challenge for nurses is meeting that regulatory requirement. Sometimes it's heartbreaking for us to see that you come with like five, 10 years of work experience as a nurse and then come here again, then you have to prove it. 
you have to prove and go through the, the processes again, uh, and, and also go through what we call the uh, objective structural clinical examination, so that there's a, a patient uh, actor that, that pretend to be a patient and you have to demonstrate your skills. So all these things are not familiar uh, to you uh, that need some uh, help and all that. And also you may be told to take some courses because you're missing this, this, this course and there's a limited uh, academic uh, uh, course available. So what are the opportunities now? And, and we're seeing a lot of changes of that. Uh, the regulatory body are more flexible than ever before. And as we speak, uh, the care center actually facilitating um, competency uh, uh, placement with um, some major teaching hospitals so that to bridge those gaps. So we have a lot of things in place to support uh, uh, all of you in that process, guiding you uh, uh, along. And then as I mentioned, uh, over the years, uh, things have become actually better. Uh, so I don't want you to get discouraged because you encounter a certain uh, questioning and all that, and uh, there's way uh, to get help for that. And also employment. For the, for the longest time, there's a lot of issue about uh, finding a job. And as you know, uh, a lot of times it's whom you know, not what you know, right? We heard that a lot. But today, there's a lot of jobs for nurses at all levels. Even before you become a registered nurse, registered practical nurse, uh, there are other jobs that can use your skills when you're in the process of getting your registration. And the increased demand of nursing uh, during the pandemic is... Uh, we are juggling with calls, actually. Let me tell you, as of this morning, I'm talking to employers who would like to hire our nurses. So I'm very delighted we can be of help there. So this is one opportunity. Uh, another thing is that after you work, uh, get your license, get your first job and even beyond, you will find the nursing in Canada maybe a little different from where, where you, you are now. Uh, we expect very strong nursing leadership uh, uh, in all care environments. So that a lot of nurses are very independent. They're leading a team. They are in charge of units. Uh, they are uh, expected to question anybody, including physicians. A lot of times that's a challenge, uh, including physicians, administrators, if they notice anything that is not quite right, right? They don't expect you to put your head down and say yes. They expect you to take that strong leadership. And uh, with uh, care, we support that as well. And then another thing that maybe uh, international educated nurses are not used to is a lot of times is the philosophy of patient-centered care. And for health uh, care uh, places that have uh, young children as patients, we call it family and patient-centered care. So they are the one that driving the care, what is appropriate, which make a lot of sense because we have a very, very culturally diverse patient population and we need to know how they care for the sick uh, and, and the unwell so that we can basically support them because at the end of the day, they're gonna go home. I mean, the patient belong to the home, not belong to the hospital or any uh, healthcare environments, right? So that's where the philosophy come from. And here we as nurses, we are supporting that. Uh, and there's times, um, not so pleasant times, very, very few, but it happens, particularly in this past year with COVID, that uh, people associate certain racial background as uh, having more COVID or cont uh, uh, being contagious or whatever the case would be. Uh, but I want to assure all of you that uh, in all workplaces, there are rules and regulations that forbid this kind of behavior. So there are ways that uh, the organization will help you and your professional organization would help you as well. So very importantly, speak up. So the um, cost cultural awareness and communication strategies is very important as well, that we need to uh, learn the Canadian way of doing things so that we can perform efficiently. So what the Care Center is about and what we do. So Care Center actually celebrating our 20th anniversary uh, this year. So every month we have a, a webinar and actually this uh, uh, week, uh, the 16th, uh, uh, Next week, the 16th, we'll have one as well. So uh, happy to send that link to uh, a Canadian immigrant to share with all of you as well, so you can uh, join in. So we uh, are actually informed that at the time of a nursing shortage crisis 20 years ago, and just so you, things kind of come around again. So at that time, uh, we are crying for nurses, just like we are now. 
And uh, that's how care come about is to, to respond to the call from the government uh, to set up a service to support nurses who come from all over the world uh, to become nurses uh, in, in uh, Ontario. And now we actually have a peer arrival program uh, that we actually prepare uh, nurses before they come in 2016. So uh, as we speak, we have served over 5,000 nurses from over 100 countries. And uh, we're happy to serve service you and support you uh, when you uh, come to, uh, before you come to Canada actually and after. Uh, so um, we are working very closely uh, with stakeholders. Uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, Cameron is coming next to us. We work with them as well. So we have a lot of uh, employment, settlement, regulatory, academic and professional organizations that we work very, very closely with. Um, and also we have formal partnerships and mentorship program with healthcare employers through our operational job sharing program in Ontario and also with the Canadian Nurses Association across the country. So uh, the core to our service is one-on-one -on -one support through, uh, uh, through case management. So what that means, you are the center of our attention. So you can see uh, at your right-hand side of the screen, you are everything that we do. So when you join us, you will be assigned a case manager to yourself because everybody's different. Every country have a little difference uh, in terms of uh, uh, nursing. So that's why we have the one-on-one. -on -one. We're holding your hand, we walk with you, we will help you uh, go, go through the journey and uh, to see your success. So we will do a, a, a readiness assessment. We'll make sure that uh, uh, your language uh, uh, benchmark is established and that we will provide counseling, again, in collaboration with a lot of settlement agencies uh, that will provide that counseling to you. So we have language program that's very specific to nursing. So uh, the Institutional uh, Canadian English uh, Language Benchmark uh, uh, Program uh, that we are uh, providing to you free as soon as you join us. We also have the cell band orientation and preparation, which is required by a lot of regulatory bodies. Uh, we also have a nursing communication foundation, so enhanced communication strategy for nurses. So very specific occupational specific, uh, uh, so that we know that nursing itself have our own language, right? Even acronyms can be different. For example, in Ontario or in Canada, uh, PT is uh, physiotherapy, uh, but in other countries may not be, right? So OT, uh, for those of you in the British system, is, is the operating theater, but in Canada is occupational therapy. So all those idiosyncrasies that we as the insider, we will be there to help you. So we also provide networking opportunities because whom you know is very important, right? So we will start with a free student membership uh, for you through the uh, Registered Nurses Association of Ontario or the VRPN. And we also have guest speakers that who are nursing leaders in, in the uh, country and uh, particularly in Ontario to share with you the expertise through webinars and, and so on. And also we provide optional job sharing. And actually since this past year, because of COVID, we cannot go to the hospitals to do that job sharing with an, uh, a nurse we actually provide that virtual. Uh, so last time, I'm happy to tell you that we have 18 formal partners that join us uh, on this journey. Uh, so very, very exciting so that you can actually go to the clinical area or talk to a nurse who have actually nursed in Canada to see how it's like. And then of course, Megan gonna tell you about the uh, Canadian Nurse Association mentoring program as well. So employment, we are very focusing on nursing employment. So we have employment skill workshops, uh, looking at your resume and so on, cover letter. And we're very, very fortunate. We actually have quite a number of hiring managers. Uh, uh, a lot of people know about St. Michael's Hospital, Sunnybrook Health Science Center, those major teaching hospitals. They have uh, managers who know us so well that they actually come on site and now virtual to do that mock interview with you. They are very honest with you to tell you what to do and what to say. So uh, to ensure your success. 
And we also have referral uh, recruitment opportunities. We have job fairs uh, in collaboration with employers as well. And then of course we have professional development workshops in career planning so that you can uh, map out uh, uh, your nursing career and match it with the demand uh, uh, in the workplace as well. Okay, so Megan is going to give you more detail about the two programs. Yeah, yes, thank, thank you so much, Ruth, and, and thanks everybody for joining us. Um, so to join our provincial post arrival stars program, uh, one does have to be a permanent resident, a Canadian citizen, a convention refugee, or have immigration status through the caregiver program. Um, if we can see that you've applied for permanent residency status. Uh, along with the uh, residency status, IENs must have at the minimum started a file with the National Nursing Assessment Service, the NNAS for short, or received a letter from the College of Nurses of Ontario, the regulatory body. And uh, again, reach out if people have, have questions about that, but um, the NNAS collects all the documentation, reviews the IEN's educational um, credentials, and the College of Nurses of Ontario is the regulatory body that governs registered nursing and practical nursing in Ontario. So to talk about our pan-Canadian pre-arrival program, uh, we have a similar um, eligibility in terms of immigration status. So along with being overseas and being a nurse, so we need to see that a person has graduated from a recognized nursing program overseas, a permanent residency status is also required. Um, and we offer a wide array of supports uh, and services designed to shorten the time that internationally educated nurses spend from arrival in Canada onto professional uh, registration and employment. And uh, as, as many folks know listening in, it, it is a long, um, complex assessment process and it should be started as far in advance um, uh, to a person arriving to Canada as possible. So this is just to give you an idea of a list of the documentation that can be accepted at intake to show that a person is eligible for pass. And uh, Ruth and I are going to uh, leave our emails, our contact information uh, at the end of this presentation so you can get a hold of us if you have any questions about our pre or post-arrival programming. Um, due to the length and complexity of the assessment, as I've mentioned, uh, participants are encouraged to join PASS as far in advance before they get to Canada as possible. And uh, depending on arrival dates, uh, services can be tailored to make sure that people have the most crucial information before they arrive. We're uh, one of 16 pre-arrival programs. Um, our colleague Cameron's going to be speaking next. And we're the only pre-arrival program that's hyper-focused and specialized on one occupation. So we are the only program uh, specifically for nurses. Ruth uh, highlighted our case management tool that's at the heart of everything Care Center does. It's the same tool utilized in PASS. So participants do receive as much individualized uh, targeted, tailored guidance as they need, um, depending on their circumstances, uh, their assessment pathways and goals in Canada. We largely do um, our case management over uh, Zoom and GoToMeeting. Uh, we have around 110 hours of programming. Uh, we do the same live webinars monthly. Um, however, we do have pre-recorded options uh, for those whose schedules preclude, preclude them from attending live. And there can be challenges dealing with so many different time zones. Uh, we have you know, uh, information on the credentialing assessment process, nursing in Canada, regulations, scope of practice, um, Canadian labor market demographics, professional writing skills. We also do offer two online nursing specific communication courses nursing communication foundations and enhanced nursing communication skills. Lots of language supports that can keep people busy uh, for years. <laughs> um, learning a language is, is a multi-stage process. And uh, Ruth alluded to this earlier, but we offer mentorship connections pre-arrival 
um, across Canada to mentors who've been recruited through the Canadian Nurses Association. And we have a wonderful group of mentors um, that are available, um, time permitting for people who've participated in the other components of PASS. They can access an individual connection, but our wonderful mentors um, also sit in on most of our group webinars as well to offer their guest expertise and opinions that way. So I know we're coming up on time. Uh, so again, we this has kind of been a crash course in care center programming. So we do encourage people to reach out. Um, but we also wanted to leave people with uh, some additional strategies and um, keys to success. We, we talk about this a lot at Care Center and we have a specific webinar in this in past that I'm facilitating tomorrow actually, um, just on the wide diversity of uh, regulated nursing roles and, and just really interesting nursing positions. So we encourage people to pursue opportunities in nursing that do harmonize with people's passion and interests. Um, and, you know, not necessarily just traditional or clinical bedside settings. Um, people can find a nursing job they love that, you know, from such a diversity, private contract nursing, travel nursing, long-term care, public health, military nursing. So I like to remind folks in PASS once they can get through this complex credentialing assessment process and, and gain their licensure, really the world will be your oyster. Um, we talked earlier about patient-centered care. So remembering uh, nursing is caring and the care receiver defines what that means. Um, patients and families in Canada, as Ruth mentioned earlier, are very active participants and contributors to their own individual care planning. They have control over their healthcare choices. They need to know their options. They need to know all the information to make informed decisions about their health. So we do a lot of work in uh, pre and post arrival at Care Centre um, about providing culturally and linguistically relevant care and taking patients' preferences and values into consideration. Uh, continue embracing technological innovation, new ideas. We're always encouraging people to get out of their comfort zone. Um, you know, expanding expansions recently into digital and virtual care, learning new software, surgical devices, um, electronic health records for documenting patient care. Uh, be prepared, be flexible and adaptable. Those are attributes highly valued by employers. Um, they, they need nurses who are able to adjust with the times and um, adjust to rapidly changing work environments. Uh, Never, never more than now, as people know. And um, it's such a tough, you know, situation everybody's undergoing, navigating the assessment process while, you know, dealing with a global pandemic. Um, just a reminder to take each situation as a chance to learn. And in each crisis, there's an um, opportunity. And there have been a lot of new opportunities that have arisen in the healthcare sector, um, particularly deriving from COVID. So just a few uh, tips we wanted to leave you with. And we do encourage people to reach out um, with any questions. And I know there'll be a Q&A portion as well, but Ruth and my emails are both on this slide. So uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. And uh, thank you again to Canadian Immigrant for this opportunity. It's great to be with you all. Thank you, Ruth and Megan. That was excellent. Great information and uh, very practical information. Um, also, I like what you said about the world being your oyster. That's fabulous. So let's all kick everything off with a positive mindset. So we have a number of questions come in. I'm going to just ask you this first question. You've talked about it a lot, actually. Um, I'm a nurse from India, and my immigration was delayed due to COVID. And while I'm waiting for an update, is there anything I can do in advance of my arrival to get ahead before landing? You've talked about PASS, you've talked about pre-arrival programs, um, having documentation available and having it ready. So is there anything else you want to add? Um, oh, do you want me to start that, Ruth? And you can oh, yes, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sure if this participant is in PASS yet. Um, he or she could be. So yeah, keep, keep participating in PASS. Um, you know, we've got a lot of great webinars that can familiarize you with nursing in Canada and different settings. 
um, lots of guest webinars that aren't included on our regular roster. Um, so yeah, there's lots people can do, continue working on their language skills and their nursing communication skills. Um, the main, and I think this person actually brought this up in, in, their, in their question um, and answered it him or herself, but the real focus I would say pre-arrival is um, making sure you get full complete detailed docu documentation into the NNAS and regulatory bodies. And that, you know, that, that, that's crucially important and it can make a difference in, in the regulatory results that a person gets. So really focusing on the assessment process and becoming familiar with nursing in Canada. And um, if this person's not already connected to me, um, please reach out. And whether you're in pass or not, I'll, I'll try to give you some advice and encouragement. Uh, Ruth, is there anything to add to that? No, I think you uh, capture uh... Unless it's uh, not what uh, the person thinks is sufficient, if there's anything, I think you answered quite well. So, thank you. I'm going to jump to a question which just came in. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about the partnerships with employers? Mm -hmm. What could you offer in terms of sharing job postings and sharing potential candidates with home care employers? Yes, so we have uh, uh, formal partners. I just mentioned we have 18 and then there's some not so formal uh, that they consistently reach out to us. Last time I have over 30 employers that we've been working with uh, facilitating job fair and they actually hire virtual job fair and, and then uh, they actually uh, hire people, interview people and all that. So uh, the beauty of this partnership is that our the case managers were, uh, are able to basically match the qualification, the skill sets of our member with the posting. You know how when there's a mismatch, things kind of do, you know, they won't go well, right? So we, we match that and, and we work with the human resources department as well as the hiring manager. And as we speak, actually next uh, week um, at uh, 12 o'clock, next week, Wednesday, uh, June the 16th, William Osler, as you know, William Osler is in the uh, POA region, large organization with three different campuses and amatory care and so on. And they, they are having three of their uh, staff, two hiring managers and one human resources specialist uh, meet, meeting our clients. And then if anyone interested, I, I, I think maybe we can even help you uh, get on uh, to hear it. Uh, so this is just one example. So we work very closely with them. So they uh, will send us the job postings. We'll match them. We also uh, have permission to link their career page to our website. So our member can go directly there uh, should they find that whatever the job posting the case manager share with them is not what they want. And there's many other opportunities. Right now, it's just, I have never seen so many vacancies and how many people are wanting uh, to hire IENs because they're really recognizing the excellent skill set, the language, the cultural competencies and all that that the IEN bring to the table. So um, there's no reason why uh, when you come to Canada, you cannot work as a nurse. Uh, it breaks my heart like a couple of years ago, uh, I walked into a flower shop and this wonderful, wonderful lady put this bouquet together for me. And I was saying, you are so friendly and attentive at this beautiful smile on your face. You should become a nurse. And she said, I'm a nurse. And I said, what are you doing here? I need you looking after patients. What are you doing here? Right? And she couldn't find a job. So right away, I said, you have to come, you know, joy care. I, I, we're going to help you. So there's so many jobs. And I really encourage all of you who come here. When you get into a workplace, you have to get into a healthcare related workplace. Okay. So if you work at the hospital as a healthcare A and, and actually the PSW, people are familiar with PSW. If you're a care member, I can bet you any money, no one will ask you for that certificate because we have agreements with many of the employers that anybody coming through care, they will not ask for that PSW certificate because they know you are a nurse. They, they know that we help you to make sure you, you have the skill that, that meet those uh, requirements. So there's so many jobs. So a lot of uh, the folks that work as um, uh, healthcare aides, uh, it's just different title or PSW in the, in the community or home. And some work as research assistants, right? Uh, uh, that uh, do a lot of clinical trials and all that. You don't need, you don't need a nursing registration for that. So there's a many uh, related 
uh, jobs that you can uh, uh, do uh, to, to get your nursing registration and beyond. And another thing I really like to remind the audience that a lot of you come uh, to Canada not as a new nurse. Right? Many of you actually been in leadership roles, like you've been a manager or a head nurse in some countries. And we have a lot of those jobs for you as well, uh, that you can actually go back into those jobs rather than have to start from the beginning. I always uh, uh, make this make fun of myself, actually. I say, if, if, if you ask me to go back to the best side, I don't think I can do it. I've been away for too long. Uh, I worked 10 years at the best side. I worked another 13 years as a clinical nurse specialist. But for the past, decade, I've been actually doing administration. So if you throw me back to the star IV, I, I don't think that's a good idea. So what I'm saying to those of you who are, who've been away from the front line, uh, who really been in education or administration, there are also opportunities for you there as well. Yeah, and, and uh, that's why we have the one-on-one -on -one, uh, uh, case management approach, not just one cookie cutter. Right, so uh, I think that's uh, the way that uh, we address your needs uh, rather than uh, getting you to do everything that you don't really need to do. So very basically boutique, very specialized to your needs. Great, thank you so much for that Ruth. We have a number of other questions that have come in. So I'm gonna encourage everyone to just reach out to Ruth and Megan directly. They've shared their contact information. Mm -hmm. so please reach out and send them information or send it to us and uh, we'll forward on to uh, Ruth and Megan. So thank you. Thank you for all your questions and thank you uh, Ruth and Megan for an excellent presentation. Well, thank you and uh, best wishes. I, as I said, I've been a nurse uh, for over three decades. You, you will not regret to be a nurse in Canada. The sky's the limit as a, uh, in terms of opportunity. Best wishes. Great, thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, so next up we have, um, we have Cameron Mosher. So um, this is the Canadian Immigrant Web Conference Series for internationally trained nurses and medical professionals that um, is being organized in partnership with Access Employment uh, and sponsored by CARE, the Center for Educated Nurses. So Cameron, welcome. Hello um, everybody. Hi, so Cameron is the Director of Services and Program Development at Access Employment supporting the ongoing growth of employment programs that accelerate the labor market integration for internationally educated professionals. So in this session, Cameron will highlight the career development processes that are used by highly successful healthcare connections uh, program at Access Employment. So Cameron, uh, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Ramya. Um, and it's a real privilege to go after Ruth and Megan. Uh, Ruth and Megan do an amazing job in all of the work that they do. Um, and as they mentioned several times, we work closely together with them. Um, you know, when you come into kind of a service environment where you see organizations like ours working really collaboratively, you know that if you come to us and, and, and care for nurses could do a better job in what lines up with your goals, we would make sure you go there and, and vice versa. So it's great to uh, be joined together with uh, such great um, champions of diversity and employment and the success of healthcare professionals. So I'm gonna share screen here. Um, so I'm going to be talking today about the Healthcare Connections Program at Access Employment um, and how we support internationally educated healthcare professionals, including nurses, in bridging into broader, the broader Canadian healthcare sector. Um, and so as Ruth and, and Megan were mentioning, there are wide, 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 wide number of uh, positions and employment opportunities within the healthcare sector. Not all of them are direct client care uh, provision types of positions. Many of them um, are in just it's too broad of a number of positions to discuss uh, really in detail. So what we do is we work to benefit internationally educated healthcare professionals who meet one or two requirements, right? One, we serve individuals who've selected not to pursue licensure. Um, so many of the nurses that we serve, they don't fall into this category because licensure for nurses is a much more straightforward process uh, where we are serving um, internationally trained doctors, 
uh, international trained dentists. Their uh, pathway to licensure is uh, it's much, much, much more difficult. Many of them um, just decide that they're not going to pursue licensure, they're going to pursue other employment. Um, we also support individuals who are looking at other ways of staying connected within the healthcare sector while they're pursuing accreditation. Um, so most of the nurses that we serve would fall within this category. Um, they know that there's a process to, uh, to go in getting licensure. Um, they started that process, and in the meantime, they want to get good quality employment. Um, and many of them have interests in employment that um, that are outside of direct client care. Um, as Ruth mentioned, there are lots of nursing positions that don't include direct client care. There are you know, a million other types of physicians in the broader healthcare sector like that as well. So everything that we do is built around those types of IE internationally educated healthcare possession professionals who possess healthcare expertise that they wanna transfer into an alternative career option. Um, a little bit about the history of this program and our philosophy behind it. Uh, we started off with the concept of meeting internationally educated healthcare professionals where they're at. Right? So we know that the process um, of securing licensure is long and complex. Uh, we know that for many individuals, it's a difficult transition to make um, into non-regulated professions. Um, and so we really, work very hard on meeting you where you're at when you come to us. Um, so we've had four years of very, very successful program delivery in the greater Toronto area, um, having served over 400 internationally educated healthcare professionals. And with each person that we serve, uh, we recognize that taking a position outside of that licensed healthcare position that they were used to working within um, is difficult, it's a compromise, right? For almost everybody, your first choice as an internationally educated nurse is gonna go into be working as an internationally educated nurse. Um, and any other position, you're, you're compromising to do that. Um, however, that doesn't mean that when you're making that decision that we just kind of try to take up anything that's available, right? We should still be aiming to find employment that uses as much of our skills and experiences as possible, that brings as much value to ourselves and our employers and our communities as we possibly can. So we built up a Healthcare Connections program. We work in partnership with a range of organizations, a range of um, internationally educated healthcare professionals who come in and share their experience with our clients. Um, and we've put things together in a really highly targeted, high intensity, short duration training. So what we do is um, really a five to six week process of really intensely figuring out what that employment journey for you is gonna look like and how we can support you in being as successful as possible. So we wanna drive that employment of success, but not just any employment. Um, as I mentioned, we want you to be using your skills and experiences as, as fully as possible. Um, so one difficulty that um, is often presented in this employment journey uh, for internationally educated healthcare professionals is they say, um, you know what, Cameron, I just wanna take any kind of job, right? I'll start off anywhere, just get me a job. Um, but I think most of us in this room know that where you start in employment makes a big difference in where you end up five years down the road, 10 years down the road. So we want you not connecting with just any job, but connecting with a really good job. Um, and we also want to make sure that over the medium term and the long term of your career journey in Canada, that you're continuing to use those skills that you've developed that you're able to fully contribute as, as much as you would like to, to the health of individuals and communities. So the, the work that we do um, in your labor market journey is really a first step, right? We're gonna really work hard with you to get you that first good quality employment opportunity, right? We know that then you may be working with an organization like Careful Nurses on your licensure and transforming that into a licensed position down the road. And then we know that long-term, you also have other career goals which you're gonna fulfill. 
Um, so we, we're really happy to help you get started off in a good, positive way in that long journey. So our five-week training in the Healthcare Connections program, uh, we start off with a lot of self-exploration. Uh, we do some work in what we call occupational change management. So in occupational change management, we explore what it means to make big changes in our careers. We talk about our identities, how our identities are so intertwined with our professions. We really honestly address issues such as um, identity anxiety, status anxiety of moving out of a licensed healthcare profession into another profession. Um, and then we do some really, really, really interesting work to build on that on creative problem solving, where we bring in an international framework that's meant to develop strong creative problem solving skills. And we apply that into um, that occupational change management so that we're able to open up our eyes and open up our minds to a lot of different possibilities that are in front of us. Um, then we work very closely with a team of uh, professionals who are all internationally trained uh, medical professionals from a wide variety of um, healthcare backgrounds in developing alternative career pathways. So if someone is interested in medical research, right, what are some alternative career pathways we can develop through that? If, some, if another individual is interested in community health, what are some good career pathways available within the community health field? really consciously looking at those, building those out, connecting those to our existing skills and experience and determining what kind of skills building we might need to do in addition to really be attractive to employers in those areas. After we've identified those uh, main career pathways that we're looking at, we do extensive, extensive work in job search and business communication, particularly in healthcare related business communication. Um, so within job search modules, we are really figuring out how we help potential employers to understand who we are and how we connect with their needs. Um, they're, the reason they put that job posting there is because they really need certain skills, certain mindset, um, certain personalities to get the work done that's within their areas. Um, and we work on consciously crafting what we're doing to align with them um, while still maintaining its, its relevance to ourselves. Um, within our healthcare business communications, uh, we work on answering a lot of difficult questions. Um, as you can imagine, uh, being an internationally educated healthcare professional, you get a lot of questions out there, right? Someone may say, um, I see that you're applying for a harm prevention coordinator position uh, all of your background is in nursing. Tell me how nursing and harm prevention connect, right? And you've got to be ready to answer those types of things. Um, we also look, as, as Megan and, and Ruth um, indicated, at those particular Canadian idiosyncrasies of communication within the workplace. Um, we always have some uh, individuals in a training environment who, are, who need some work on becoming more assertive in their communication. And for each one of those, we have another individual who needs some work in becoming a little less aggressive in their communication, right? So we're always trying to find that optimal communication mix to fit the employment environment that you're looking at. Um, within all of that training, we intersperse some sector-specific modules. So we know individuals uh, who are taking part in healthcare connections have identified what type of alternative career pathways they're looking at. We dive deep into those areas, um, really into clinical research, into health information management, um, into communication in a cl clinical setting, into the, the real nitty gritty details of those employment journeys and the skills that you need to be successful with them. Uh, in addition to our full program, which we offer uh, three times a year, uh, we also offer a series of interim trainings in between because we know that uh, individuals sometimes cannot wait, you know, three months for another training program to start. So for individuals who are interested and ready, we do have a one week interim training that we do between cohorts, where we really, really hit the high level overviews of the training environment, so that you can be prepared um, if you join into a future five week training. 
within the Healthcare Connections program, internationally educated healthcare professionals acquire a huge amount of information necessary to transfer their skill set into the broader healthcare sector. Um, a lot of what we do follows a model of uh, very strong group supports coupled with individual one-on-one -on -one supports. Uh, we also use a hybrid service delivery model where we have a lot of our uh, training materials online that are available through our e-learning platform so that when we're together in a classroom environment, we're really doing high value interactive activities where we're engaging on materials and working together as a group. Um, so within that, that mix of group services, one-on-one -on -one services, um, we're identifying pathways, developing the skills to be successful and moving down those pathways, and then making the connections that you need to be successful. Um, I always tell you know, people a little bit about my story. I immigrated to Canada, um, oh my gosh, it's hard to even count now, 13, 13 years ago from the United States. I was a family class immigrant. Um, I met my partner at an academic conference in the US and then I came to Canada. And you know, 13 years ago, I was still, a, I was a pretty smart guy. I was pretty hardworking um, and I knew nobody. And it took me nine months to build out that network um, and to engage with the people that I needed to engage with to start my career journey in Canada. Now, what we work with participants on is accelerating that. We don't want you to have to spend nine months a year building out your network piecemeal here and there. We are bringing a huge network of mentors, partners, um, who were joined by two of our partners who we work actively with during this presentation, mentors, partners, and employers to the table. And those partners, those mentors, those employers, they all know the work that we do and trust the work that we do. Um, and in return, they extend that trust out to the participants that we're working with um, in putting opportunity in front of them. Right? We really, really, really make sure that Anyone who takes part in training with us is ready for those opportunities and good to go so that when they get them, they can take advantage of them. Um, a large part of that, uh, as I mentioned, building connections is really around building social capital and connecting. So a lot of the mentors and guest speakers that we have um, in our program are listed here. Um, they include Mount Sinai, Apple Techs, Telus Golf, a series of community health centers, which we find have uh, really, really strong uh, employment openings for internationally educated nurses, um, as well as research institutions, um, some you know direct service providing organizations. Uh, we work closely with these organizations, and we've had around 200 other organizations hire individuals out of healthcare connections. Um, and what they do is they really bring that expertise and that knowledge into the classroom. I would never come in and pretend that I know everything about the healthcare environment. And you don't wanna hear that from me, even if I did. If you wanna know about uh, pharmaceuticals and what's happening in pharmaceuticals, you should hear that from someone like Apotex. And if you wanna hear about um, you know, a research organization that conducts research, you know, maybe we should be out there talking to LMC Manor Research. And if you wanna know about community health, you should really be hearing about that from a community health provider. So we want you to get that information firsthand from mentors, employers, and partners who have it. We can focus on supporting you in your employment journey. Uh, we've done a couple of really interesting pilots and, and programs that I thought I'd mention as well during, um, during COVID, during the last year. Uh, we recently took part in a very interesting pilot with uh, Sun Life Financial. They provide um, short-term disability as well as other insurance and financial products. Um, and one thing that they looked at doing within this um, pilot with us was hiring internationally educated healthcare professionals from uh, one neighborhood in the Toronto area um, into disability case adjudicator and disability case management positions. So it's a, it's a really interesting career pathway and in working in um, disability insurance for international educated healthcare professionals. Um, and in that pilot, we were able to support uh, seven out of the 19 participants in gaining direct employment with Sun Life. 
Um, 12 of those we continue to support. Um, and I believe tw out of those 12, um, since we ran this program, uh, I believe six of those have uh, been supported and secured and implemented at other organizations. Within our broader healthcare connections program, we have a success rate of 88%. Um, so that's participants who have moved directly into employment in the broader healthcare sector, um, and a small number of those who've moved into further training. Um, we have pretty high demand for it, so we really encourage individuals who are interested in this training to come forward early so that we can support you. Um, for every three individuals who are interested, we only have two seats within the program. Um, we've supported, as I mentioned, 117 just since January 2020. So in the last year during COVID, um, as Ruth and Megan were mentioning, there's been an explosion of need for healthcare professionals, not just in direct healthcare provision, um, but in community health, in public health, uh, in vaccination support, in a wide variety of roles that are connected to communities' responses to COVID. Um, and we are very, very happy in this last year to have supported so many individuals in making that. And we were initially created to create opportunity because we, we pictured a lot of retirements going on in healthcare. Um, and so Healthcare Connections was created to respond to that opportunity. And we've had the opportunity since then to respond to other crises such as COVID. Um, really, really encourage you to, to think about that wide variety of other uh, program other um, employment opportunities that are available to you as an internationally educated nurse. As an example of some of the employment opportunities that our uh, graduates have taken up, um, you can see here that we've supported people in moving into clinical research, infection control, uh, vaccination support, contact tracing, uh, medical quality assurance, uh, lab technicians, clinical coordinators, research assistants, um, all areas where someone with nursing background um, and particularly individuals you know, with a nursing background who've had a varied experience within nursing can contribute to um, the success of organizations and the health of individuals in a different number of ways. So I'd be more than happy you know, for you to come talk with us. We have some time now to answer questions. I'm gonna put up a, a quick uh, link here to where you can engage with us at, and I know that'll be available to you later on in the, um, in the replays of this. Um, that link has um, what we call a, a virtual attendant. So there's a, um, somebody there who you can talk to who can guide you through some of the basics of getting in contact with us, finding out when programming is available, and connecting you with individuals who can support you whether it's through the Healthcare Connections Program and Access, um, whether it's through us making a referral to another organization, um, or through any of the number of other programs that are offered at Access Employment. Um, I'd also like to thank, uh, take this opportunity to thank all of our funders at Access. We are um, you know, very grateful to have a wide variety of government funding that supports us in providing free services for individuals who need support in reaching their employment goals. Um, and that's that's the end of my presentation. Really. Hi, thank you, Cameron. Thank you, that was excellent and uh, very practical tips, lots of great information. So um, if our uh, participants weren't able to uh, take down all the information, please be aware that uh, this is being recorded it will be available on our website and uh, also on YouTube. So thank you, thank you for that. So um, while I'm working, question one, while I'm working part-time as a personal support worker, I'm hoping to get a full-time job. I find it challenging to grow my contacts within my local community to find new jobs that are being posted. Is there a recommended networking site to use? I find LinkedIn to be limited for nursing. Um, yeah, I, I would say that LinkedIn is very, very big, obviously, right? So um, to, to be in a very, very large, broad, deep, and wide environment is, is a little more difficult. Uh, we focus on really making those connections directly, right? So 
Um, if you are interested, um, you know, please get into contact with us, get into contact with Care for Nurses. Um, I think one of the one of the reasons that we are able to be really successful in securing employment is through acting as that connector. Um, because you always want to overcome that, um, that first look, right? It's hard to get in and get that first conversation. And that's why we put a lot of effort into making that first connection, making that first conversation, and building from there. Right? So I, I would really highly encourage you to engage with um, a service provider that specializes in services for internationally educated healthcare professionals, internationally educated nurses, um, because there's going to be a, a curated experience for you that has a very well-crafted uh, mentor and connection network. Thank you. There's a very specific uh, question. What about hiring uh, phlebotomists? Oh, yeah. There's a ton of hiring on phlebotomists right now. <laughs> right? So um, as I said, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, we, we get regular uh, requests to connect with phlebotomists. Um, all of the major kind of um, contract testing sites such as Life Labs and others, um, I, I believe are still really, really actively hiring uh, phlebotomists. You know, I think one difficulty in being able to make those connections and figure out those employment opportunities is recognizing that the, the position is not always listed as phlebotomist, right? There's, there's a, maybe a lot of positions open where they want somebody who can do phlebotomy, right? But they're not hiring someone just to do phlebotomy all day and the name of the position is not phlebotomist. So, um, you know, we could support you in figuring out what positions are there and how you can connect with those. Great, thank you so much. Um... So this is being presented on our website. So you will, everyone will have uh, contact details for our presenters and Cameron just uh, shared a, a link um, to how you could get in touch. Um, there's one question saying, how long do you take to respond? I guess that would depend, right? Um, yeah, if you, if you email me on a Sunday afternoon, it might be a little while before I respond. Um, but if you go to that link that we presented, what that link is gonna do is point you to the right person to contact. Um, it's going to tell you all the times that um, it will tell you all of the times that you can um, come in for an information session to learn more, right, about that. Um, and yes, I can give you an email contact. Let me let me do that. Ramya, what would be the best place for me to put that email contact? Just here into the chat. Here into oh, the chat. Yeah. Or yeah, that would be the best way. Okay. So I'll put that in there. I'll give you the, um, the program manager for our Healthcare Connections program. Um, and if you contact her via email, she'll be able to get back to you. Great, thank you so much. Thank you so You're much, welcome. Cameron. Lots of great information. So we'll go to our final speaker for the day uh, at the Canadian Immigrant Web Conference Series for internationally trained nursing and medical professionals. I beck Tizol. Hi. Hi. So, sorry, I said your name wrong. Ipek. That's okay, no problem. I'm sorry, I paused <laughs> for a second. Ipek. So, Ipek is a community connector and a public policy and research professional and a partnership specialist for Eastern Canada at Windmill Micro Lending. She oversees the management of strategic partnerships with educational institutions community organizations and settlement agencies to increase awareness on windmill services available to newcomers in Canada. So if you have questions, uh, please feel free to type them in the chat once again by clicking on the chat button and typing them on the right side or in the Q&A. You can also email us at info at canadianimmigrant.ca. So thank you for joining us. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, in fact, go ahead. Thank you, Canadian immigrant. Thank you, Ramya. And thanks um, 70 of you um, who have remained on the line. Uh, we made it into the hour. And because this is a one directional webinar, um, I really encourage you to get out of your seat, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, you know, um, get yourself comfortable. Um, my um, intent for my portion of my presentation is to really 
um, understand how windmill micro lending fits in to um, the relaunch of your career here in Canada as internationally trained nurses. Um, I'm going to be start um, sharing my screen. So if you can confirm that you can see my slides, that would be really helpful. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Go ahead. Um, okay, so I think one of the main points that Ruth and Megan really um, highlighted in their presentation is the idea of um, your, your knowledge, your, the, the value of your knowledge and experience coming in as internationally trained nurses um, and the, the value that you bring to the Canadian marketplace, especially the healthcare sector. Um, so while our um, tagline for windmill is converting potential into po prosperity, um, it's not to say that your prosperity and your potential is only available here in Canada. Windmill is here to bring forward the expertise and the knowledge that you already have and make sure that the labor market integration um, happens to you smoothly. Um, so at the highest level, Windmill Micro Lending provides up to 15,000 in loans to skilled immigrants and refugees to pay for Canadian licensing and training needed to Greece. So if you do choose to uh, proceed with a nursing career, um, as it was highlighted by, by our folks um, care, um, at CARE, um, there is a licensing process that you will need to go through. Um, and funding is uh, usually a big part of that conversation. So um, if you're in a situation where you're living off of savings, um, funding becomes increasingly important. Um, and for you to set up a economically viable um, living situation in Canada and start your career, it's really important to thinking about how the funding um, is made available to you. So Windmill is really there as an alternative finding, uh, uh, funding opportunity. Um, and I will go through um, the eligibility requirements and the application process for you to kind of get an understanding of how our program works really. Um, I'm going to take you back in history a little bit and talk about our history. Um, so how we started as an organization was Dr. Maria Erickson, who was a Calgary-based clinical psych um, psychologist, um, became increasingly aware of the, the fact that um, some of the janitorial staff in the hospital that she was employed in, um, some of the volunteers, some of the um, aid staff, um, support workers, were actually internationally trained health, health professionals, and licensing was really an issue for them to overcome to start practicing the, or, uh, the profession from their country of origin. So together with her friends, she started this program, um, you know, um, at her dinner table, and she gave out six loans, um, and that was in 2004. Since then, uh, we changed numbers, so um, a few of you who've been in the industry for uh, for uh, quite a while, uh, might know us as Immigrant Access Fund. Right now, we are uh, Windmill Micro Lending, and we have given out um, close to 45 million in loans and have supported over 6,000 skilled immigrants and refugees. So, where we are at right now, um, we are available across Canada in every province and territory. We are a registered not for profit, so I really do want to highlight. Um, the fact um, that we are a registered charity um, that operates across Canada. And for transparency's sake, our funding comes from uh, a mix of sources from government to private. Um, we are funded by the federal government, the provinces of Quebec, Ontario, and Alberta, um, and a mix of private donors as well. Um, so at this point in the presentation, you might be asking yourself, well, um, couldn't I just go to a bank to get the loan um, to proceed with the education portion of my licensing process? Uh, you could, uh, but typically what we know um, from being in this space is, is the fact that financial institutions um, work with applicants who have a Can Canadian credit history. If you're a newcomer to Canada, um, you might have 
uh, you might not have a credit history and windmill is actually a way for you to build your uh, credit history. Um, the banks are going to also request uh, proof of stable uh, employment and income. Um, and there's usually a bracket of income that you need to uh, be able to demonstrate. Um, if you're in a situation where you're unemployed or underemployed, you might unfortunately not meet that criteria. Um, and usually um, you're required to show assets in Canada um, and have a co-signer in place um, for you to secure a loan. Um, if, you, if you check all of these um, listings um, and the bank deems you um, it, you're able to um, apply for a loan. Um, unfortunately, the interest rates are usually higher um, than other um, bank customers. So at Windmill, we're able to work with you if you have no credit history in Canada. We recognize that you might be in a situation where you're unemployed or underemployed. Like I said, um, you, you might be in a situation where you're living off of savings um, and credit lines of credit. Um, you might not have assets and you might not have um, the networking in place um, for you to bring in a co-signer. So those would not be a um, discouragement for you to explore a loan opportunity with Windmill. Um, so I know that some of you have asked uh, pre-arrival questions. Um, for us at Windmill, um, we do require you to legally be either a permanent resident in Canada, a Canadian citizen, a provincial nominee, a protected person, or a government refugee. Um, and we do ask that you reside in Canada. So those are our two eligibility criteria. Um, I will say, um, if you're not currently living in Canada and you're in the process of getting your PR, uh, please do not be discouraged. It's still important to retain this information and reach out to us when you're in a, uh, when you're further, uh, further in your um, immigration journey, I should say. Um, so take the information in, do not be discouraged um, if you don't meet the eligibility criteria right now. Um, and we're, and we would be happy to work with you later on. Um, we do require you to show proof of your international um, education and skills and experience related to your career goal. Um, I don't expect you to be taking notes um, of this presentation. Uh, we made it very easy for you to check out your eligibility for a one mil loan. So what I'll do is at the end of this presentation, I'll share you, I'll share with you the application link. Um, so you have. Um, and access, um, and you have direct access to the eligibility criteria quiz. So um, there is a, a wide range of uh, financing opportunities um, in Canada. That could be a bank, like I said, um, at a higher interest rate, but those are available to you. There might be provincial grants um, and loans as well. Um, but usually how the micro loans used are very limited, we find. Um, so for our um, purposes, the, the, we authorize you or we approve, of, we approve that you use the micro loans um, to fund up to two years of training and education. Um, I know that some of you indicated that you're currently enrolled in um, college courses, that's great. Um, don't think of it as, oh, well, um, you know, I already paid my tuition and this is not applicable to me. If your payment was in the last six months, um, you could still apply for a loan um, and get the, get the amount of the training. Um, but, the, but chronologically, it has to be within the last six months. Um, the microloans could also be used for fees for licensing and qualification exams exams. I know that the language courses might be free of charge. That's great to hear. Um, in that case, you can use it for other, um, other um, items, um, such as books, course materials, work equipment. Um, and say you go through your employment plan um, and you find that um, four towns over is a better opportunity for you and you would need to relocate um, for your employment. The microloans could be used that way as well. Um, living allowance is um, separate because we 
a lot living allowance on a case by case uh, basis. Um, so if you're in a position, for example, um, where for you to take, um, for you to attend your education or your training course, um, you need to um, have care staff either for a child or an elderly in your family um, that could be compensated. But um, for example, rent would not be available. So living allowance in umbrella terms, but it, it really depends on case by case. Um, and professional development and career change. Um, so that really ties in well with um, the access employment uh, presentation of how if you're in a position where you're, excuse me, <clears throat> um, career change, um, then that might be a way for you to use your micro loan as well. Okay, um, so I'm gonna get a bit technical here. Um, the terms and the conditions of our loans, like I said, we can give out a maximum of 15,000 in active loans. Um, we say active loans because sometimes um, a client comes in and they request for $5,000 and then um, they realize that there are additional costs that come up. Um, so that's they in that case, they would be able to apply for a secondary loan, but the maximum amount of active loans that you can take out once um, in total, sorry, is $15,000. Our maximum repayment term is four to five years, um, but it's important to highlight that it's an open loan, so you can pay off at any time with no penalty. Our variable interest rate is set at one5 plus the RBC prime business rate. So currently our annual rate is 3.95%. Um, um, and what happens when you qualify for a windmill loan is you get matched to a windmill client success coach and, and you receive one-on-one -on -one support with them at no additional administrative fees or charges. So um, outside of the loan that you take plus the interest rate, there are there is no administrative fees or no hidden costs throughout the process from the day you sign up to your until your loan is paid in full. We don't we don't take any administrative fees. Okay, um, so um, I'm just going to move my cursor. Okay. So um, what does the application process look like? Um, so like I said, I will share the eligibility quiz link. What happens is you apply, um, you take the quiz, you're eligible. Um, our intake team gets in touch with you. They request further documentation. Then you, um, there is an assessment view that happens with a windmill coach where you come up with a learning plan and a budget. And then um, within 15 business days of you submitting your documentation, um, your, the amount um, is dispersed into your bank account. Okay, so uh, bear with me. Uh, this is my favorite slide of the, inter uh, of the entire presentation because this really speaks to um, the road to success. Um, so what happens when you take out a windmill loan um, and how we're able to offer you um, a successful transition to your career here in Canada. <coughs> okay, so 73% of windmill nursing clients are employed in their field by the time of their um, loan uh, is repaid. Um, I will say um, that's that's great, um, but the but the but the average uh, but the percentage actually increases if you look at um, after um, the graduation rate as well. Um, we typically see an average income increase of um, two point one x um, with windmill graduates, um, and to date we have supported. Um, 718 numbers of applications approved for newcomers in the field of nursing. Um, and just to bring it home, it's 
I think it's really important to talk about statistics, but I really like highlighting individual success stories. Um, and like I said, we have over 700 applications that we've approved, um, but I really wanted to highlight um, Trumti's success story because she's actually a past care and Winmo client. Um, so when she immigrated to Canada, um, with her family. Um, she was actually um, unemployed for eight, um, eight months. <clears throat> um, and then um, due to financial concerns, she, she actually had to take um, a factory job um, and also um, held a part-time position as a senior health giver, um, which provided the income that was needed for her family but um, professionally it lacked um, um, direction. So she really wanted to find a way um, to reintegrate herself into um, the clinical healthcare sector. So what she did is she reached out to CARE um, to receive guidance um, and support um, through her licensing process. Um, and she actually passed the College of Nursing um, in Ontario assessment and passed the R, um, RPN exam, but she was not able to demonstrate that she had enough clinical hours in the past um, three years because she had been um, living, um, she had been employed in a survival job. So what happened is she signed up for a Toronto-based bridging program um, and she graduated in 2016. Um, after taking 14 courses and um, accumulating 400 clinical hours. Um, and within a month of her graduation, she was actually licensed and working as a RPN in Etobicoke. So um, I hope this is an inspiring story for you to consider um, your next steps to reintegrate yourself uh, into the healthcare um, sector in Canada. Okay, so this is the link of the application, which I'll reshare um, in the chat. And uh, once again, I really want to thank you for your time. My name is Ipek Tezel. I'm a specialist, uh, partnership specialist in Windmill. Um, if you have, <coughs> excuse me, if you have specific questions about um, the application process, I encourage you to um, reach out to the intake team directly. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, um, and then um, answer any questions that you have. And uh, once again, thank you all for um, joining us and um, Canadian immigrants for having me. Thank you so much, Apec, for that and uh, for uh, sharing, sharing all those uh, statistics as well and the success story that was uh, very inspiring. So, um, our first question is, uh, do you have a YouTube channel where we can watch your webinars for information? Yes, we do have a um, YouTube channel, um, but I do, um, I think our success stories are usually written. So if you um, go on the Windmill website and look under success stories, those are gonna highlight all of the processes um, also, the application link that you'll have, um, it's really going to um, share all of the details about what an application process looks like for you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, you said 73% are employed by the time they finish. Do you have a lot of people defaulting on the loan? So um, this is a very good question. Are we our repayment term is actually 98%, which is really great. Um, but that also means 2% of the loans do default. Um, due to COVID, uh, we found that um, we had to be more flexible with the repayment terms. So our, um, like I said, when you get assigned to a career success coach, um, they are in constant, constant communication with you. So if you're in a position, for example, where the examination was um, delayed, so you're not able to start practicing your profession. And that's not only for nurses, that's with all of the clients that we work with. That was a, that was a time where we needed to um, 
reconsider the repayment terms um, for the loans to be not defaulted. So to answer your more question, to answer the question more directly, um, there are instances where unfortunately, yes, the loans default, um, but those are um, further, uh, uh, further in between. So uh, the other question is, did you still continue providing loans during uh, COVID? Yes, actually. So the 98% is actually 1% uh, higher than um, the, the repayment term that we had uh, pre-COVID. So that's actually, that number is actually with COVID. Um, we actually increased our um, approved loan numbers by um, 200 also last year. So COVID did not stop us, no. That is great. And are you providing information virtually? Having yeah. meetings virtually? So all of our um, all of our uh, services are available to you wherever you are in Canada. Even if we don't have a physical office in your province or territory, we can still um, you would just get assigned to a coach and we would work virtually with you. OK. And so this is anyone across the country can reach out to you and get information, right? Exactly. No, okay. no physical limitations. Great. No geographical limitations, I should say. Great. So um, we also have a guide on our website uh, where Windmill provides a lot of information about, it's called the Skilled Immigrant Guide. So I encourage everyone to go on canadianimmigrant.ca and uh, find all that information on our website. So if you have any questions uh, that we did not get to, please email us at info at canadianimmigrant.ca or um, reach out directly to um, our speakers uh, for the day. So those are all the questions that have come in and uh, we will wrap up the uh, session now. So thank you so much, uh, Ipek, and. Uh, Thank you all of you for attending uh, the first uh, in web conference series in partnership with Access Employment, which is sponsored by CARE, a center for international nurses and public mobile. So special thanks to our speakers, Ruth, Megan, Cameron, and Ipek for joining us today and uh, sharing your skills and expertise with everyone. So, once again, this uh, web conference will be posted on our website for you to rewatch um, if you did not, uh, well, or if you want to share it with uh, your friends or colleagues. And uh, once again, if you have information, email us at uh, info at uh, canadianimmigrant.ca. So thank you to everyone who uh, tuned in and uh, good luck and uh, have a good day. <laughs>